What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Kendrick, talking, and welcome to another episode of my Hero League gameplay series. We were playing on Infernal Shrines today. The enemy went for an Illidan comp. Illidan as a first pick, and as a consequence, we now have a lot of counters at our disposal. You can see that Brightwing, Zul, Johanna, Thrall, everybody's being able to sort of counter control, uh, excuse me, to use their crowd control abilities on Illidan, most importantly, of course, Polymorph. Then we have the attack speed slow coming in from uh, Zul's Cursed Strikes. We have the Bone Prism to lock him down. We have the Shield Glitter from Johanna. We do have the Sun Ring. So I think um, we have a lot of countermeasures at our disposal. Also, a Nova was being picked against a Brightwing. Um, Brightwing, of course, being a very strong counter to Nova with her peekaboo talent at level 4, uh, being able to reveal a large area around her. So I'm a little bit skeptical when I take a look at the enemy team's lineup. Uh, the map is, of course, going to be Infernal Shrines, so Raynor, also a very big factor with a Hyperion, being able to sort of um, zone out enemies while fighting for shrines, being able to support ongoing pushes with a Punisher very, very well with all those, <clears throat> with all this structured damage, excuse me. So, and the enemy team does not have Burst Healing. No Uther, no Divine Shield, um, only Tassadar to use his shields on Illidan and trying to keep him alive, so I am very, very optimistic. Let's see how that game goes. And we're definitely going to take Shade here as a level 1 talent because it also gives us evasion and against a strong basic attacker like Illidan, of course, Shade and the dodging effect is very, very crucial, very, very strong. Now, as Azul, we definitely are one of the strongest solo laners in the game, so you always want to make sure to hold your lane as a single person and not to feed too early, not to miss any uh, major minion waves. So yeah, we're going to try to do exactly that. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's see who our laning opponent is going to be. Okay, it looks like we have Illidan, the man whose uh, play is going to catch a lot of attention here. And being supported immediately by the Tassadar. So, although Sul is a very strong laner, we might actually require some assistance. I'm going to let our team uh, know about that. Because against an Illidan and a Tassadar is going to be very, very hard. And there's a Nova too. They definitely wanted to get some early ganks going. I don't really want to commit too hard here. Now, Illidan might be in trouble. We're slowing his attack speed, we're trying to damage him a little bit with a Scythe. It looks like Brightwing is the focus target, and Illidan once again being very, very strong with all those shields. Ah, actually really, really well done by the enemy team. Mm, I think Pupatko on the Brightwing might have actually rotated a little bit sooner with a uh, Hyper Shift. But uh, as it is, you know, losing a hero early on in the game isn't really the end of the world. In the meantime, we have Raynor fighting against Murden. And of course, what the enemy team is trying to do here, they're trying to uh, put the early game aggression on. With heroes like Illidan and Nova and Fawcett, they can do a massive amount of damage early on. So we're gonna, just going to have to play a little bit more carefully here and uh, try not to feed them too many deaths, right? All right, here we go. Raynor is actually going to be the next one. He overextended like crazy. I mean, he was literally standing close to the enemy's towers. Anyway, so let's try to get something done on our part. We're basically rotating a little bit between the lanes in order to get skeletons on as many lanes as possible. Now we might actually be able to do something against that Illidan using evasion right now. Can we get the Feral Spirit? Nicely done. But it's not going to be enough. At least we damaged him gravely, forcing him to retreat. And forcing people to take sips from the healing fountains is actually quite important because then they won't have any means of regeneration during objective skirmishes, right? So really, really well done. Careful, Illidan used a lot of stuff here, used the evasion already. Polymorphed and rooted. Rainer is a little bit too late to the party though, I believe. Illidan is still dancing around. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Illidan cannot go back and take a sip from the Healing Fountain while we can. Same happened to Johanna, unfortunately, which is the reason why she's teleporting, why she's teleporting back all the way to the Hall of Storms. Rainer, be careful, my man. Let's wait for our warriors to come back. We're now level four as well, so we're gonna take. Uh, I think we're gonna take Jailers actually to have a little bit more um, single target damage at our disposal. Okay, the lane is pushing. I'm gonna use our Spectral Scythe here. Hasadar doing a great job. Oh, there's a Nova. I think we found the right one. Nova dropping very, very low. Tassadar immediately trying to save her, abandoning the rest of his team, and that's why Yoldin had to die here. Really, really cool stuff. Oh, nice peekaboo actually here from Brightwing, revealing the Nova. And our skeletons are also really, really good at blocking snipes, you know. That's also a reason why I went for Jailers, because um, rooting a Nova 
basically causes two skeletons to spawn immediately in her vicinity, and that makes it very, very hard for her to land a good snipe, you know? And we're actually taking a lead here in terms of skeletal defenders. Very, very nice. Right wing also using her peekaboo again. But Nova is still dead and nowhere near, in my opinion, so... 29, 31. We should have this first one. Let's not commit too hard, though. Basically, we're just zoning them away here and buying our team a little bit more time. There we go, and we got it. The first Punisher is at our side here. Really, really nice. Also, a great, a really, really great Feral Spirit by our Thrall. Oh, Murden doesn't have the Dwarf Stuff anymore. Rippy, are you gonna Rippy? Haha, <laughs> Sick City. That was actually unnecessary, in my opinion. I'm not sure why Murden uses Dwarf Stuff there. So basically what you want to do on Infernal Shrines, guys, if you secure the first couple of Punishers, always go back to lane. Um, the pushing power with the first Punishers is actually rather limited, because if the enemy team does it well and baits it behind the enemy uh, gates, then it's going to fall very rapidly. So by actually making sure to be in lane and not miss any soak, we're probably going to end up with at least a one level lead uh, if the enemy team doesn't react quickly enough, and you can see that what's going on, right? We're getting exactly what we talked about. Uh, almost a one level lead. Now we're gonna take Rathma's Blessing. It's a really nice talent to sort of keep us well sustained uh, while being in lane. And we're trying to play with us a little bit here. And we're getting another tower here, which is really, really, oh, uh, oh! Uh, the hero minion didn't get it. Oh my God, Falset is here and Murden. Can you believe it, everybody? We're dodging the storm bolt, but it's not gonna be enough here. Wow, I did not expect three enemy heroes to take care of me. Um, that was actually insane. Totally didn't expect that. And in the meantime, the enemy team also managed to get some mercenaries in the bottom. So our rotations right now, our rotations are a little bit lackluster. Not really sure why we have two people in the top now. Not really dealing with anything here. With polymorph and the Illidan. And now at least we're dealing with those goatmen. China should be okay, Raynor helping out in the bottom, so that means we don't have anyone in the middle, and that's exactly where we are going. Should we actually assist our allies in the bottom? I think so. Oh, that's a, that's the right Nova. He's being supported by Tassadar, though. Okay, looks like there's a lot of action going on, going on once again in the bottom lane. No warriors on either side. So we're just gonna let our team know that they should play extremely passively. We don't want to miss any XP here in the middle of the lane, uh, middle of the map. Excuse me. How's my team holding up in the bottom? That's of course not the real Nova. So after Tassadar reaches level seven, his support capabilities are actually really, really good with the Kala's Embrace. Constantly shielding your allies is very, very important. Careful here. Raynor is very, very low and Illidan is already here, so we have to be quite careful. We definitely want to get level 10 before the enemy team if possible. Raynor took so much damage. Dude, one Nova Pokey Poke and you're absolutely a goner, my friend. Ever. Okay, we're almost level 10, guys, but we definitely want to support our team in the top lane a little bit more. Okay. Careful, we must not die here. Very nice, and we're level 10. And Poison Nova online. Nice thundering. But here comes the hunt. Can we actually get him? He's blinded and rooted. Nice turnaround. Actually, this fight did. Oh, we can take a sip from the hidden fountain. Actually, this fight didn't really look too good because we lost Brightwing, our main support. And if you lose the support, guys, early on in a fight, not really the best of things. But uh, we managed to swing it around with a great thundering from Thrall and good tanking from Johanna overall. And Raynor was untouched. And if you leave a Raynor untouched, guys. He's gonna bring the pain with a bullet. Don't mess with a Jimmy. Don't mess with a Jimmy. All right, here we go. This Arcane Punisher should be ours. And you know, the Arcane Punisher, also known as John Cena, being the strongest one of them all, we're saving... Oh, is that the real one, actually? 
No, it wasn't a real one. But the strongest Punisher of them all, of course, is the purple arcane one because the laser beams that he plants on the floor are just ever so powerful. Now, we definitely want to make sure to soak all the lanes while the Punisher is doing his nasty work. Careful, guys, I'm just going to let you know that I'm not going to be with you. Instead, I'm going to go to the bottom lane because the fort is exposed and with our skeletons, we can definitely do a lot of, a lot of damage to that. There we go, using our superior wave clear. Skeletons online. Spectral Scythe to hit as many buildings as possible. And we're definitely going to get that one while well, John Cena is supporting our team in the top lane. And that means, thanks to the rotation, we're getting whoa, we're getting two forts, eh? There we go. Nicely done. That's a big chunk of XP. Now we have to be kind of careful because Illidan's the hunt could actually wreck us quite hard. And uh, Nova Gangs, of course, also not really the healthiest thing at this stage. So we're just going to go all the way back, play really safely and don't give the enemies uh, any advantages to mount a comeback. Here we go, we're back in good shape. Doing mercenary camps now is quite nice, although we should have maybe waited a little bit longer for the next shrine phase. You definitely want to time your mercenaries in a way that they push the lanes while the shrine is active, you know, so the enemy team will be forced to deal with them sooner or later in order and in consequence um, of neglecting and abandoning the objective, you know? Okay, here we go. We're basically forcing them to defend all the time. Also, we're going to hit level 13, which means a talent uh, advantage. Here we go. The enemies snuck in the mercenary camp on the bottom. At level 13, we're going to take uh, Decrepify, because I really think that we can need every tiny amount of additional crowd control against their team. Corpse Explosion would have also been a nice talent um, to sort of push a little bit stronger, but as I said, I think that the slow on Spectral side can actually be quite useful. Uh, I've got Illid in here chasing me down. I need help. Everybody, I need help. Okay, we're dodging. Poison over right away. Using my Bone Prism on the Tassadar this time. Almost getting the kill here on Tassadar. Very, very low. But we got the Murden. Okay, we're gonna slow Illid in as well. But, of course, thanks to friend or foe, he can dash to nearby allies as well. So we killed a warrior, we lost um, Rainer, and uh, the mercenary camp in the top lane, I'm actually going to take care of that because it can the fallen shaman camp can single-handedly take out forts. So that's really, really important to keep in mind. Careful, guys. I'm just trying to let you know that I'm not with you. Okay, the shaman has actually fallen, so we're just going to get rid of that one real quick. Okay, and now I'm on my way to my team again. Okay, really, really good. Rainer is there again as well. Nova coming from behind. Very, very nasty. Dying in the process, though. Oh, no, we hit the clone. That was really, really bad. But I don't know what the enemy team is doing. They're playing so reckless. The Nova flank didn't work at all. Unfortunately, Muradin just barely escaped the Spectral, thi spectral Scythe. Does he have his E, Tassar? Yep, here we go. Okay, so we drove them back, and that's going to give us a lot of momentum and a lot of control over this shrine. Really, really good. We're a little bit low on mana, so we should probably save our spells a little bit more. Rainer, you're quite low, so don't expose yourself too much to that direction, because that's where the enemies are probably going to come from. Positioning is also very important when fighting for these static map objectives, right? When you are a ranged assassin, you don't want to stand here. You always want to stand here or there so that you can escape a little bit more easily. Um, don't try to expose yourself to an enemy or to a potential enemy engage. Now, getting these gold mens will further um, make our pushes on the lanes a little bit stronger. Just gonna wait for my team. Okay, Illidan is out of position. There comes the bone prism. Haha! <laughs> Capturing you in time, bro! Fortunately, he's still gonna get away, is he? Oh, nice one, actually. Nice crowd control chain, and even the Punisher is helping us. Beautiful Blessed Shield, nice Polymorph to follow up, and then, of course, our blue big bully. And then, of course, our big burly and buff buddy. My god, so many bees, alliterations. Uh, helping us out with another stun, so great kill on the Illyrian. Now we're gonna go for the Dwarf. Gonna slow him with the Spectral Scythe, but it's not gonna be enough damage anyway. We still have the Poison Nova ready. I think Nova tried to 
Nova tried to uh, flank again. I'm not really sure what she's trying to accomplish with that. We're gonna take amplified damage against an Illidong. I used my Poison Nova, by the way, to deal additional damage onto the buildings as well. I thought that we could maybe linger around a little bit more, but uh, that was definitely not the case. Instead, we should now focus on getting more mercenary camps. And I definitely agree, right wing plays an extremely good, uh, good game. But it's actually what we try to sort of talk about in uh, the loading screen, right? If you pick Illidan first, you're actually sending a cordial invitation to the enemy team and say like, come on, please counter me. So these risky all-in picks like Nova or Illidan, for example, you should always try to save them for the penultimate or the very last pick, you know? Don't try to give away your team strategy in the first picks already. Here we go, the enemies also took their bruiser camp. So we definitely want to make sure to clear the top wave. Because our fort is not really looking too, too good anymore. It doesn't have any more towers to protect it. Go. All helping me out quite a bit here. Very nice. We don't see any enemies on the minimap right now, so we should be careful. My team is also rotating up to us. Now we saw where Tassadar was, so they're lingering around here. Illidan going in again. Okay, we still have our bone armor. Poison Nova being used before we died. So Illidan died, and we died. Uh, the thing is, Illidan is a crucial member or a crucial component of their team strategy. I am not so much. So by eliminating the biggest threat in the enemy team, which is Illidan, um, we actually got more value from that team fight than the enemies did. Also, we have a mercenary st camp still pushing, forcing them to defend. Um, that means we're gonna have enough time to get that shrine active in three seconds. So here we go. And that's also the biggest weakness of Tassara, right? He can't heal people. He can only prevent damage, but he cannot restore damage already being done to you. I also like what uh, Johanna is doing. She's the first one to engage the enemy team, um, really trying to peel and poke. But Raynor, of course, playing like a frontliner. Brightwing, though, paying a lot of attention, trying to save him. And there we go. Bubatko on the Brightwing once again doing an awesome job at keeping the weaker members of the team alive. In that case, it was the, um, the Raynor, and it is not going to be enough. One after the other is going to fall, and Johanna, of course, now being the only member left alive, and I think she's going to fall as well. Here we go. So, um, that escalated quickly. Well played by Johanna, well played by Brightwing, not so much by the Raynor, because as a Jimmy, you don't want to be frontlining, yo. You don't want to do that. <laughs> the enemy's team, uh, the enemy team might actually now have a little bit of a of an advantage here, so I'm not even trying to bother, uh, you know, trying to interfering with Skeletal Defenders. Instead, I'm just gonna march to a different lane and try to de-push the other lanes so we won't really lose too much there. And there are quite significant minion waves here in middle and bottom. So here we go. And at the same time, I'm managing to, you know, soak up a little bit of XP so we won't really fall too far behind in terms of level 20 because that is... Uh, the ultimate goal right now. Soak as much as P XP um, in order to get 20. Okay, our Johanna is also trying to talk to Raynor because he definitely has to play a little bit more carefully. And I really like that. I really like the way Johanna is talking to him. He's no She's not talking in a way like, Oh my god, Raynor, you noob. Go back home. Don't play this game anymore. She's really trying to be polite and helpful. So that's exactly how you deal with that kind of situations. All set also flying in here, so we can't really defend too, too well anymore. Right wing helping us out here. Nicely done. Okay, Illidan taking oh, <laughs> a lot of damage from that in uh, from that vulnerable um, effect here from the debuff. So I did not expect to actually get a kill here. So I think he definitely underestimated the situation as well. And uh, now, of course, is a good moment to sort of mount a counter push or get some mercenary camps done. And I think we're going to go for a forward push in the middle, which is absolutely solid. Nova dealing a lot of pokey poke damage here. Okay, and she is revealed. But we can't really get her. This time Nova, unfortunately, is a little bit more careful. Rainer once again in the front line. I don't even know about that. Okay. Just going to shoot a poison Nova here. Although it didn't really hit too many people. We should definitely start to uh, retreat for now. Uh, 
That was a defensive th sundering. I'm not really sure if that was worth it or even needed. But then again, it's also nice to uh, be safe and sorry, right? Sometimes you just want to make it super safe so nobody in the team gets picked off. And since another shrine is going to spawn relatively soon, it's actually okay. Not okay, because we might miss the cooldown in the next team fight, but still relatively okay. And now it's all pretty much a race to level 20. Both teams at the same amount of XP. Here we go. We're almost there, everybody. 20. Just gonna let my team know. They probably know themselves. Okay, here we go. And against their team, we're actually gonna go Call of the Grave because I really think we might need more AoE damage over time because Tassadar struggles at keeping multiple allies alive at the same time. Um, Bone Spear would have also been something that might have been really, really good. On the other hand, Mortal Wounds, of course, not really useful because the enemies don't really have any healing, whatever. So, ooh, good luck down here in Luden already. But now it's the enemy's time to come back here. Good Hyperion, actually. Avatar being used. And another kill. Thrall just going to town here. I am absolutely loving it. Okay. That was a really, really good fight. Let's just go for the shrine, everybody. I'm just going to take care of this camp. And the rest of you goes for the John Cena. Because you see that purple color and you know things are going to be good with the Punisher. Really, really cool. The enemies are also forced to defend on the bottom lane. Really, really nice. Okay, skeleton power. Really, really good job here uh, by Thrall. I agree. And the thing is, if you don't focus Thrall soon enough, he's actually going to wreck people with the Sundering, with his strong basic damage, basic attack damage. So here we go. Let's actually reunite with the rest of our team and get that John Cena online. Looking good, looking good. Bubako taking a little bit of pokey poke. Always pull as many skeletons together as possible. Nova's still dead, only just respawned, and we have strong AoE. And here we go. Now push together, everybody. Ooh! That blessed shield was amazing! And now we're gonna try to get that murder, and he doesn't have avatar. Here we go. There goes the bone prism, and that should be enough to take him down. Illidan, what are you doing? Oh, oh! Oh, another one! Oh, Illidan, that was, a, that was a big, big bummer. That was a big, big bummer, but they're still not letting go. What a bloodbath. The enemy team did a lot of AoE damage there, but they lost four members in the process. It was a valiant effort because they know that with the John Cena at our side, it's probably not going to end well for them, and they're going to at least lose the keep and maybe even the core. So they tried to capitalize on us being a little bit low on health. Um, they used their abilities or their heroic abilities really nicely. Maybe a little bit too reckless there, but in the end, I think... They had to sort of risk something in order to mount a comeback. It's not going to be enough, though. We have a massive minion waves here. We've got mercenaries, skeleton, and uh, I think that might be it. We're also going to use Poison Nova to damage the core a little bit more. And I think that is going to be it, Lady and ladies and gentlemen. Really, really well played. Not so much by a Rainer, but... I mean, sometimes you play with less experienced players, and instead of just blaming them and, uh, you know, flaming, raging at them, and sort of try to take them by the hand, you know, towards guiding and helping them become a better player, just like our Johanna did. I really like that move. So, secret MVP of the game, in my opinion, is Johanna not getting mad, not getting super angry about Raynor, just trying to be relatively neutral and calm. Let's take a look at the numbers here. I think our damage was okay, not really overwhelming, but we have done a really good job at XP or at soaking XP. And you know, that is just, sometimes that is actually just as important or even more important. So, uh, really happy with that. We also dealt a lot of siege damage, of course, with the Poison Nova and other tools that we had. Now let's take a look at the talent build, just in case you want to sort of play Zul in here League yourself and you don't really know what to pick. So we took Shade, um, which gives us Evasion, most dominantly because of False Set and Illidan, strong basic attackers. Then we had Jailer, so these skeletons could mess a little bit with Nova. And the snipe early on, Rathnos Blessing is so good. 
it is such a formidable talent to keep you sustained and in good shape. Poison Nova, of course, because of Tassadar, he can't really heal people, he can't really heal multiple people at the same time, so he has a really, really hard time dealing with Poison Nova. Decrabify, because I thought against Illidan, against a very mobile team like Illidan and Falsa, you really need additional slow to lock him down. And then, of course, Amplify damage to get those targets and focus them, mark them, and deal 25% more damage over um, two seconds. And then call for the grave because mortal wounds doesn't really make any sense. They don't have any heals whatsoever anyway. And bone spear I think could have also been a legitimate um, alternate talent here. But I think call for the grave wasn't really too shabby either. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to. And I really hope to see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.